One of my goals in this video series is to give um, example demos of how I do uh, specific things. And one of the most common things I get asked about is hair. And um, as you can see, I start pretty simple, usually just a, a, a sphere that I append into the scene. Um, and here I'm just shaping it around uh, my head here, uh, mostly moving to, moving things around with the move tool and uh, the, the clay build-up brush. One of the things I wanted to talk about uh, was how to create inorganic shapes, such as armor. And um, I didn't, I didn't time-lapse the whole creation of uh, my model, but here's a, an example of how I uh, would go about making something like a helmet. And see, I, I start with, again, start with a pretty simple shape, such as a sphere, and I shape it to the head, or the body, as it, whatever the case may be. And um, right away, you can see right here, I'm, I'm trying to establish changes, um, uh, planar changes on the on the helmet. Uh, in I think a lot of armor, it, it can benefit from this because it adds a, a little bit more interest to how the light catches on the surface. Um, I'm going to end up removing this on the front of the helmet later, but um, to begin with, I think it's a, a good idea to block that out sooner rather than later. And here I'm, I'm drawing out the basic shape of the helmet. Um, it's uh, I'm not really following any particular reference at the moment. Um, we can just kind of wing this and and go about talking about how what what I'm thinking about as far as design goes. And this isn't going to be a full helmet. It's going to be more like just a a visor, I guess you would call it. And what I did there was I extracted my selection or my mask, and then I'm going to um, delete the hidden parts and dynamesh it. And that's just a quick way of getting the the shape of the surface to match what I had masked. Um, you can see it's there's still a lot of internal geometry there that I'm not actually going to bother getting rid of. I'm just going to keep it there for now. And going around the edges, smoothing things out, and then beefing up the edges because you know, you never want your armor, especially uh, metal armor, to look like it's paper thin. And there, I, I just dynameshed it. And here I am just cleaning up the interiors a little bit more. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about it. And, and the reason for that is because um, I'm going to be only retoppling um, up onto, onto the edge. And then on the inside of, of that, I... I probably won't even bother giving it a normal map because it's in 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 this case if if I was to use this it would almost never be seen so it's not that important and here you can see uh something happened with the symmetry it kind of got screwed up and would you know it's an easy thing to fix I just mirrored well to and here is this is how I like to establish uh, layers. Um, really, it only takes two lines. You can see I'm drawing a positive line and then a negative line right next to it. And that's that's usually enough for me to give the impression of two layers, one on top of the other. In this case, the one on the side of the head on top of the layer um, on the forehead. I mean, it's not as simple as that. I mean, you have to still have to clean up the the surfaces surrounding it a little bit, but um, just as a quick way to block things out, I think that's a, a pretty easy way to do it.
again the uh, the edges are always the most important part for me so you you'll see me adjusting them from all angles uh, and trying to get them as smooth as possible and and right here I'm I'm adjusting this part of the helmet because I didn't want this surface to be so simplistic like right now if you imagine it from if you're looking at it from the bottom for example it, it would just be a curve that's kind of going like this and I wanted to add a little bit more complexity to this curve so that it, it curves this way and then it also dips in right there I think that's a another important thing to to try to impart on in, in your shapes just to don't have it be so linearly curved if that makes any sense just drawing on some uh, rudimentary detail again I'm just winging it I really don't know where it's gonna go at this point here I'm experimenting with the uh, the forehead shape. Um, I think this kind of design, at least the first time I saw it, was uh, in the Valkyrie profile games. And uh, one of the characters had this a helmet with something like this. And I've seen it many times since then, but that was, I think that was the first time I saw it. And I always thought it was really cool. Again, just trying to add more complexity to to the edges. Not try, try not to have them so linear, or not just linear, but not so, n don't make the curve so simplistic. And here, um, before I started doing this, the curve here was going right up into here, creating this this tangent. I'm just trying to break that, uh, make one layer obviously underneath the other and have this one poke up up and out a little bit more it's just a way to to make it look more designed if you were to have it um if you if i had kept that edge going into this one um it kind of creates the same effect as if you know you you're taking a photograph of a friend and you you arrange the photo in a way where your friend is standing right in front of the building so that a building behind it looks ends up looking like it's on your friend's head. You know, I don't know if you've probably seen pictures like that where it's just uh, an unfortunate composition and you want to avoid that in your design whenever possible. Trying to add a little bit more detail to the, the front here, and creating an, another layer. And uh, as you can see, uh, I like to work at pretty low resolution. Um, you can clearly see the, the polygons, and, and that's perfectly fine with me. In fact, um, I prefer working at this for as, as long as I can, just to keep the surface really responsive. And it's, and it's easy to clean up, too. Like, you see all of these, un and all this une unevenness on the surface, it's... It's way easier to control it at this stage. And here you can see I, I added this, these uh, rows of um, of layers, and uh, you know there's a reason why I I arranged it this way. You know when you're doing design elements like this, you avoid having them evenly spaced. If I had split this into to thirds, it would have given it a completely different impression. Um, here, there's more like a, a hierarchy. There's one obviously big one, and then a medium, and then a smaller one. It just adds a, a little bit more of a progression to how you interpret the design. And sometimes when I don't really know what I'm doing, I just kind of noodle on some uh, generic shapes, and, and hopefully from that, uh, it'll spark my creativity to 
to establish something more concrete. I'm gonna end up getting rid of that though, but you know, just uh, just to check and see. And that's a, that's the beauty of working at low resolution like this. You can kind of make these kinds of experimentations without feeling like you're committing to anything. Here I'm just shaping uh, the helmet piece around the ear. Um, in, in retrospect, it, it was kind of a waste of time because I'm going to end up getting rid of all of this a little bit later. Um, but, you know, just uh, sometimes you got to go down one path before you realize it's not the right way to go. And uh, I think you might have seen right there, I I drew a line um, with my fall off sharp brush with a pretty low strength, but with a pretty large brush. And that just helps me create a very quick and easy um, plane change. And I think those plane changes are, are always very useful to have. Um, it just prevents your helmet or whatever you're building from looking like it's too round or too boring. Right here, um, you can see again. I'm, I'm starting my design by drawing it, and then what I'll do is I'll cut in in a way, um, using the the line I drew as a, a border. Now here, um, I didn't like how all of these, all three of these layers were coming to the same point, so I'm just staggering it a little bit, having the the largest one be longer than the other ones. Always save your work. <laughs> And right here, I'm, I'm going to struggle in this area a little bit, trying to think of a, an interesting design to put on this, this piece here. Um, I, again, I'm going to get rid of it eventually anyway. But uh, it's I, I did try to carry through some of the, the previous design elements I had put on other areas, such as the staggering effect in the, in the, in the multiple layers. And that's going to happen a lot when you uh, work and you get a concept, but maybe you want to get a front view and then you have to make some, up something on the back. Just just trying to carry through elements that worked in the front view that were drawn out, um, see what you can do with that, and putting it in the back, and, you know, things like that. Here, I'm just trying to clean up how the helmet frames the face. I definitely think it's very important to think of, especially with a helmet with an opening that shows the face, you want to see how it, how the face sits. It would give a completely different impression if the helmet were higher and you could see more forehead or less, you know. Um, it's just, some shapes just are more flattering on the face and uh, it it's going to be up to you to to really be conscious of that when you're working and um, because when you when you're not thinking about it 
you can kind of just go through the motions and, and create a shape and just kind of pop it on there and then it'll always look kind of um, undesigned and um, and just uh, kind of amateur so you you always want to think of whatever you're building even if you're just building a shoe or a boot you want to think about how it fits onto the character as a whole because any weakness that um, comes about especially between two different objects um, it'll bring down the whole piece and here you see I before I I drew a line vertically here and I was trying to break up this plane uh, trying to establish a more interesting way for the lighting to hit this um, but when I drew it vertically um, it kind of broke the flow so here I'm just I went ahead and, and did it this way and, and I just beefed up that shape probably using the form soft brush or something like that just to to pull it out without ruining the line that I had drawn and then cleaning things up with the clay buildup and then trim dynamicing the surface to, to clean it up again there you go you see me trying to add more interest into the the planes and at, pretty soon I'm gonna need to think about what kind of design to put on the front of the helmet it's just uh, a little bit too plain at the moment And looking at the rest of the design, um, these the way things layers lay, um, overlap each other, it kind of gives me a kind of a, a wing feeling. So I'm gonna try to carry that through here to maybe get, make this more of a symbolic bird shape. There you can see I got rid of that the plane change in the middle there. It was kind of distracting. I thought it might be better if it was just a, a rounded surface. You see uh, on the, all the edges, you can see I'm, I try to add a little bit of a, a trim to it. Um, I think especially on m metal armor, uh, it kind of needs something uh, on the edges, some kind of trim to make it look um, more finely made. If, if I was to leave it without that, it would look too crude. Um, and maybe that's okay on cer certain kinds of armor, but for this, uh, you know, she's an elf or, or whatever, some, some kind of more elegant um, creature. And the armor should kind of reflect that in this piece here so it should be more uh, more light more decorative perhaps um, so that's the kind of feeling I'm trying to get by adding trims and things like that and again this is the surface is very low resolution so I'm not going to have uh, too much to work with as far as detail, but that's fine. I just want to block something out and make sure it works at this stage before committing to um, it uh, at a higher resolution. Again, adding more trim. Here, going back to, to this area, trying to Think of a cooler design. I 
you know, as interesting, the thing to talk about was just what, what exactly is cool? Um, it's one of those things that a lot of people know when they see it, but when it comes to actually doing it yourself, um, you know, it can mean a lot of different things, uh, to different people. So, uh, I think it's just a matter of experience, um, and how, how, how closely have you, pay, how have you paid attention to things that you think are cool, um, as far as design goes and, um, growing up, you know, you develop a, a visual library of things that you think are cool. Um, and you know, the, the more of that you, you paid attention to throughout your life, the, the better you will be at coming up with designs that you yourself think is cool. And I mean, I don't know if anyone else thinks this is cool. Um, it's just something I'm, I'm winging at the moment, but, um, you know, it just has a design language that, um, that I personally like. Again, just trying to create these edges because that's basically where I would stop the retopple, right? Like right there, it'd be enough to get, um, the outside edge. But then from the inside, all the stuff in here, it's going to be nothing in the end. And even for a presentation on the high res, it looks fine. No one's from, you know, from this angle, you, you don't even see any of that internal stuff. You know, looking at your model from all angles, just trying to make sure it's it's reading right there you go I was just trying to exaggerate this layer there so I just masked this part and moved it move the sides out right there I just drew a line there trying to um, change the the plane again so the, this, this plane here is more obviously facing up and this plane down here is more obviously facing down, catching the shadow, more light on top. It's kind of subtle, but I think it's better than if it was just one continuous, the round surface. You see how I kind of move things and undo it just just to, to see if it would look any better. Just take some chances once in, a, once in a while. And right there, you can see I, I indented right there. And that's just because when looking at it from a distance, I thought that um, there wasn't enough contrast in here. Um, but, you know, I don't want it to be overpowering, just enough to... Um, add a little bit more visual uh, interest in this area. And, you know, again, any kind of indentations or think any kind of uh, sculpting that you do is going to add some contrast. And you just want to be careful where you're putting that contrast and, and how much of it are you putting in there. Um, for example, right here, I can see from a distance that this is going to be a problem for me later. I think it's too strong, this contrast, and I'll deal with it in a few minutes. And here I'm experimenting bringing this part down. Uh, I was wondering if having a continuous curve going around the eye and having it unbroken, um, would, was that too boring or not? So I'm sort of experimenting bringing this down a, a little bit just to add a little bit of um, disturbance to this curve and I think I I think I like it um, it's got to clean it up a little bit and not and make sure that it's not too obvious and, and not too jarring you see I jump around on different parts um, as as I see 
um, problems come up. Um, I, I don't take any one area to full completion. Here I'm checking, um, <laughs> checking how this might look with certain hairstyles. I mean, none of those hairstyles were designed for this helmet, but but it did give me um, a fresh look. And if I found out that I was probably bringing this out a little bit too far, so I'm locking it back. And here, I'm going to finally get rid of this this section here. I just thought that um, the way this whole thing was resting on the head, it it looks like a lot of the the weight was going to be on the ears. It just seemed like it was too heavy. So I'm just going to get rid of this part right here. And also here, because I thought that it just added a lot of unnecessary bulk. Um, Instead of a helmet, at this point, I was thinking that maybe this would be more of a crown or a tiara, something like that. Partly because I also didn't want to think of a design for the rest of the helmet. And similar to what I did before, I'm just going to hide those pieces, those, those areas, delete the hidden, and then close the holes or, or dynamesh it. And you can see that it worked fine here, um, but it didn't work so well here. The, it closed the hole, but it still uh, added a lot that I didn't want. But that's fine. I, I can see where what I was trying to do, and I just go back in there and manually uh, carve it out. And I, I did subdivide it at this point, too. You can see that things got kind of mushy, but, th but that's fine. I, I know what in general what I want to do and I'm just gonna go in and clean things up and here I'm experimenting with something um, again I was still afraid that that curve in there was too boring so I'm ex experimenting cutting this hole out it's kinda of like how I did it on top but in in reverse but you know I didn't like it so I got rid of it And dynamished it again there. And now I'm going to go into the more detail. And I, I like to start with just drawing lines again and just to establish the boundaries for what I want to do. And then I'll clean things up around it. And right here, you know, I, as you can see the surface here, it, if you look at the profile of it, it would be very wavy, I guess I would call it. Um, there there aren't any cl very clear distinctions between you know one shape or another, and that's kind of what I want to do at this phase. So what I did was I drew the lines in, but then I needed to clean up the transition so that you'd get shapes like this with more abrupt um, changes rather than things just kind of um, very smooth looking. Um, you do want to be careful. You, uh, you. I, I think we talked about before where, um, depending on how you're going to bake your normal map, you might want to slope the edge a little bit just so that there are some pixels that can be rendered along the edge there on the normal map to um, give a, a better sensation of uh, transition between two different layers. But I think in this case, this should be fine. Again, carrying the wing motif through to the front here. And you can see um, I'm going from different camera angles all the time. Like I'll draw something in the front view and then I'll go to the side view and make sure that um, the curve is working the way I want from that view as well. It's, and a lot of times it doesn't. So I'll have to move things out manually. But that's fine. It's usually pretty.
pretty quick and easy to do. And, uh, you know, I, I think how you do your curves is, is very important. Um, again, going back to the idea of, um, reverse curves and how curves transition from one to the other. Um, uh, it, it's all for, at least for me, the way I like to relate it is back to, um, line work and drawing. And I think the the way I personally measure how good an artist is, is how sensitive they are to these kinds of flowing lines. Um, and similarly for in 3D, um, I think the better 3D artists tend to be more aware of these kinds of curves and working to get better curves. Um, I think a lot of amateur artists, the they'll kind of be ignorant of this and or they just won't give it a lot of attention and that's why their work might lack a little bit of uh, refinement I mean you know it's at this point it's kind of a, a subtle thing and uh, I think your average viewer, your average gamer probably isn't going to care or even notice, but um, you, something you feel when you look at it more than you, you see. But, you know, it's just one of those uh, extra things to strive for. Here, I'm just uh, making sure that all these curves are actually curving the way I want and not just like being bumpy and indented in certain areas. Just filling things out with the clay build up. And then reinforcing the edges, making sure it's clear. Again, you see me spend a lot of time on on these edges just because you know the they are for me the most important parts of the design it's where the most of the contrast is happening is where i think most people will be spending most of their time looking not so much on here if there's like, if there's a bump here you know yeah it sucks but it's not as bad as if the line here was wiggly or distorted i think that's a, a bigger problem if you can fix both, um, that's great. You're just using a trim dynamic brush, shaving things down to a, a finer point. I, I do avoid having things become too pointed. Um, I think, ironically, the the sharper you get a shape, the the less strong it is. Um, it in a way, it almost seems less sharp, if that makes any sense. Um, it's like it's like when I'm drawing. If I was drawing this, um, if I was drawing a point, I would almost always uh, kind of add a little bit of extra darkness to the, that point, um, just to uh, give it a little bit more of a presence, so that you notice that there's a point there. If you had it just going gradually. Um, to a point, fading it out lightly. Uh, it, I think it, you, um, as far as composition goes, when you, when your eye goes there, you're, you're it, it doesn't have anything to anchor your your. The it doesn't define any boundaries. I guess I'm trying to say, and the same thing goes with in 3D here. I, I think giving it a little bit of mass towards the tip. Um, it just gives it uh, more of a solidity, and it, not only that, but it will render better on your normal map, or at least render more easily, I should say.
Here I'm just trying to even out that surface there, just the, the clay boat up brush. Here I'm, I'm making sure that these two things are clearly separate things, like this is clearly a, diff a different layer than this one. And, th and that means, you know, not being lazy on these edges here and not just having it meld together. Now, I could have just made this as a separate object. Um, just like I could have made, you know, any of these layers as a separate object. Um, but, you know, when you're working in 3D, um, you just kind of have to make some compromises. Sometimes that would just be way too many subtools. Um, becomes kind of a, a nightmare to deal with, especially in ZBrush since there are no great ways to really organize your subtools. Um, uh, but not only that, but you know, just keeping things together, you have you only have one thing to worry about. Like if you didn't like the shape, you could just move them both at the same time. Um, it's just less of a hassle for me. And if I can keep them together, um, then I, I probably will try to do that. I mean, it's just for for most cases, um, I think sculpting the edge. If I if I'm careful enough then it can give a feeling of it being separate um, in a way that's effective enough for me. Again, yeah, you know, you could you could tell a lot about the surface just by looking at how it, the light is reacting to it. And um, there, the lighting was was pretty strong. The highlight was showing pretty strong, which was telling me that um, it was coming forward too far. Especially since this layer is supposed to be on top of this layer on the bottom, so it wouldn't make sense if that highlight was stronger in a way than this highlight. So I just knocked it back. And defining the defining more edges, adding more trim. You can see like the way I draw a line sometimes. I mean this is a time lapse and sped up, but you can see it looks like I'm drawing it multiple times and, and really what I'm doing is I'm drawing it. I don't like it and I undo it and draw it again. I don't like it and I undo it. And I just keep doing that until I get in as few strokes as possible the shape that I like. Um, I think it's a little bit better to to do that in as few, pos in as few strokes as, as you can. The result is usually a little bit cleaner, I think, than if you were to use a lot of strokes. here I, I really don't know what kind of design to do I'm just kind of drawing things out and if I if I don't like it I'll, I'll change it and you know I don't know really know what these these curved things are gonna be but I, I'm guessing maybe they're kind of like a gold wiring detail But you want to be careful how you're you're drawing it. It could, especially using um, the brush I'm using, the the follow sharp brush, it could change the form of the surface underneath it if you're too heavy handed with it. If you see uh, the video pause sometimes, and it's not because I'm talking, it's probably because in the video at a switch screens, someone's probably Skyping me or something like that.
here just uh, bringing in this little corner here more sharply those are kind of the most annoying <laughs> things for me to, to do actually just bringing in little corners and trying to make them look sharp Again, just trying to be very conscious of how the curves look in all directions, uh, from all points of view. We spend uh, some time just build, clay building up the, the surfaces underneath, just trying to make sure that the form is right. Yeah, as I was, I was saying, as I was was saying before, um, I do jump around the model quite a bit. It's just uh, whatever happens to catch my eye at the moment, and if I feel like I've worked enough on one area, and maybe I'm I'm bored and I want to do something else, it's just, uh, just jumping around. I think uh, doing that, um, if you do that enough, eventually you'll start to find fewer and fewer things that bug you and I think at that point you you'll know that you're close to finishing Just cleaning up that that edge. I know it's going to be visible um, with the face on, and I, I want the edges, especially surrounding the face that frame it, to be pretty clean. And again, you see, I'm just clay building the surface up, and then trim dynamicing it to to make it more smooth again. And you know you could use the H polish brush as well. Um, I think most people prefer that. Uh, for some reason, I feel like I have a little bit more control using Trim Dynamic, though. I mean, they're kind of suited for different things anyway. But um, for for this kind of thing, I, I like the Trim Dynamic brush a lot. And here I'm just trying to make sure that these two layers look distinct from each other. I think that's a, a very important thing to to keep in mind is how your layering works. Um, it should make sense, visual sense, um, and you know it's something that's pretty easily overlooked a lot of times. And when I see um, other people do do armor, but um, if it's not right, then it's just gonna confuse people. So, spending a little bit extra time on that is always worthwhile.
There you go. I'm trying to really clarify the layering here, make each layer distinct from the other. and decide exactly how much um, the surface should be indented there. I thought it was a little bit too much, so I just bowed it up again. So at this point, turning the, the face back on, um, I'm going to be adjusting this part right there. Yeah, right there. Um, I thought that this over, there's a if you look at the silhouette here there's a overall curve here um, that I thought looked kind of boring um, what I really want is to to separate it so that it's not it doesn't look like this um, kind of vague curve like I mean if it was more extreme more more of an obvious transition then that'd be fine but in, in this case it's so gradual and so undefined that it almost looks like a mistake so what I want to do is, is go more clearly in one direction or the other in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve it like this I think I'm going to do yeah so I'm just drawing the boundaries and then I'm going to cut that part down And this just makes it look more purposeful, like like someone really designed it to be shaped a certain way and not just having things lining up by accident or anything like that. But as you can see, it's still not enough. It still follows that this curve up here too too much. So I'm gonna exaggerate it even more. Yeah, there you go. Now it's much more of a difference than what it was before. And uh, if you look at from front view for a second there, um, the highlight that was created by this these two layers on the bottom here, um, it was too strong. But, and it was contrasting too strongly with uh, the dark area underneath it, the shaded area. So what I'm going to do is bring this in like that. And now, when you look at it in front of you, the, the lighting here is not strong anymore. Before, it was kind of like this up here. And so you'd, you'd get this, uh, when you're reading the surface, you'd get it look like looking like um, it was going like this, and then like out again. And what I wanted was just to it to go down and in, and keep it the, the, the value um, a little bit less. I mean, obviously, it depends on what angle you're looking at things in. If you looked at anything at a certain angle, it's going to be light, and that's that's fine. But that's not what I was after. And then uh, one last thing. I didn't like this uh, little divot here. It just uh, seemed unnecessary. So I'm just going to remove it. I'm just drawing a boundary and then trim dynamicing it down. then yeah redefining the edge there to finish off the somewhat piece I'd probably subdivide the mesh again and polish the areas that really need it I'd focus on the details that need the most definition and clarity because I think in general most of it is reading okay the way it is uh, depending on the viewing distance in the game you might not have to define very much 
Uh, and remember that after a certain point, the size of your texture actually becomes a limiting factor on how much detail is really worth adding to your high resolution model. I sculpted this model, uh, but some people may prefer to model these kinds of things in traditional modeling applications using more precise polygon modeling tools. Um, this usually yields cleaner results, and in some cases it can be a necessity depending on the art direction of the game. I personally think sculpting armor can provide perfectly acceptable results in fantasy games where the armor benefits from appearing more handcrafted and not quite so perfect. 